Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. The South African National Roads Agency this week held a media briefing to outline its financial position in light of the delays in the implementation of e-toning on Gauteng's freeways. Terence Green attended the briefing. Hi Terence. Sunwell stressed that the financial challenges it is facing is limited to its toll portfolio. Can you provide an overview of the different portfolios of the agency? Yes, they've got about 20,000 kilometres that fall under Sunwell, uh, that's the national road network, which is a small portion of South Africa's bigger road network, which fall under different uh, levels of government. And within that, they have a toll, toll portfolio of about 3,000 kilometres or, or going up to 4,000 kilometres. And about half of that falls under concessionaires that are run you know, independently of Sanro. And then they've got uh, uh, about 2,000 uh, kilometres which fall directly under their portfolio, which includes the Gauteng urban tolled roads. But it also includes that roads that go up uh, through Limpopo, roads that go into the, um, into the eastern part of the country from Johannesburg, so into Mpumalanga. Some roads are on the N2 in both KwaZulu Natal, Eastern Cape, and, and parts of the Western Cape. So th those road, that portfolio, is being affected by the delays to the um, the Gauteng Freeway Improvement pro Project and its implementation. And uh, th th there is some financial distress around that portfolio. So the bigger portfolio, which um, is really funded mostly through the taxpayer, <coughs> that portfolio is not really affected. But the portfolio that is directly controlled, the toll portfolio that is directly controlled by uh, Sanro, um, is, uh, is needing to be funded because, um, or it's got some funding holes because generally uh, Sanro was a regular, you know, uh, entry into the bond market. So it would go with a bond and raise a bond and use that to pay for its toll portfolio. At the moment, it's not in a position to approach the bond market because of what's happened around uh, the e-tolls in Gauteng, because of the delays. Um, the, you know, the, the bonds are, are basically trading flat. They're not going to be going approaching the bond market with new is issuances until there's greater certainty around whether the, there is a model that can pay bondholders back. So it is sort of in this position now where it has holes uh, that have to be filled. What are the most immediate funding issues facing the agency? Well, the most immediate thing is that it, on the 31st of October, a, a bond worth about 1.48 billion, 1.47 billion, uh, is coming due, and matures on that date. So that has to be, uh, you know, new debt has to be found to to cover that, or you know, new revenues or new sources of funding have to be found to cover that. That's an immediate uh, priority. And what we've learned this week is that um, Sanwell's approached a number of commercial banks to find a way of finding bridging finance for this period of uncertainty between uh, implementation and the funding of the Heart Train uh, Freeway Improvement Program and whether ETOLs are going to be implemented, which they say they are, uh, or some other funding mechanism. And, uh, and you know, th this period where um, there's maintenance and repairs and upgrades, as well as debt repayments that are coming due. So those are the, Im the immediate one is that bond repayment that has to be uh, dealt with. But there's also maintenance and upgrading on, on certain of the roads that fall under the direct Sanral toll portfolio. So not the concessionaire, not the Durban Road, uh, uh, not the uh, Maputo Corridor that fall under concessionaires, but the ones that Sanral operates. An update was also given on the state of the Gauteng Freeway Improvement Project. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, I think you know there's still uncertainty about the implementation of this uh, of this very controversial project. Uh, we've had uh, several court cases, legal challenges, and uh, there's another one still to come at the Constitutional Court. I think that's set down for some time in September. And um, but really, what I what Sanral is waiting for, the policy maker, which is government, the Department of Transport, and the National Treasury, has made it clear that they still believe that the user pay principle is the most appropriate form of funding this, uh, this road project that we've already invested the money, around 20 billion rand has been invested in Gauteng roads, but obviously with interest payments and all sorts of things, it's much larger uh, um, in terms of what the price tag will eventually be, as well as we have to, uh, there's a mechanism of 
um, collecting tolls, which some people feel is exorbitantly expensive. So the update um, uh, was given around what, you know, because there's been this delay in implementation, what is the next step? The next step is clearly President Zuma f assigning the legislation that's needed uh, for Sanral to, to move ahead with enforcement. And that still sits on the President's desk, so there's some uncertainty there as to when that's going to be done. We have heard from the new Transport Minister, De Pau Peters, that she sees it as an urgent priority for this President to sign off and that she'll be pushing for that uh, sooner rather than later. But we also heard that <coughs> while there's we in this sort of uh, non-toll environment on these uh, on these uh, very important highways around Gauteng, um, they are still having costs associated with the uh, contract to collect tolls. So that's with a, a, a consortium called ETC. Everyone talks about uh, CUPS, but CUPS is the lead uh, joint venture partner within that consortium and brings the technology to bear. But ETC has costs, and the contract allows it to cover costs. And it uh, was emerged that that's 25 million rand a month. So uh, Sanral, even though we're not in uh, tolling conditions, are bearing costs of 25 million rand to ETC and paying them for the services that are in the contract. Now we also, uh, well, so that will continue until um, hard tolling, uh, because we're in a soft tolling sort of circumstance, uh, starts. So hard, once hard tolling starts, we're not clear what the price tag will be monthly for Sanral to cover on the collection of tolls. The way it's structured is it's not a, a fixed uh, a contract uh, fee every month that they'll be paying to ETC. The contract is for services rendered, and those services are as expensive as compliance. Uh, so compliance dictates how expensive the, the, the fees are going to be. So if ETC has to do a lot of legal enforcement um, and has to f uh, you know, track uh, customers up that haven't paid and has to do a lot of paper-based postal invoicing, then it's going to be an expensive uh, exercise. If there's a hard take up of e-tags, which comes with the um, incentive of a number of discounts, and that's what I think Sanral is hoping is going to get uh, motorists and karting interested in actually acquiring an e-tag in the sense that they get a whole lot of discounts, then the cost of, of operating the system comes down materially. But at the moment they're working on a, a balanced approach where they expect some people will get the e-tag, some people won't, and there will be an evolution towards a higher compliance levels. And they're thinking it will go up to around 60 million rand a month operating costs. I think that's it's going to be a key focus because I think those that would rather th that the fuel levy gets used uh, are saying that the the uh, the the burden uh, of paying for these this collection uh, and the cost of paying is 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 simply too high. On the other hand, um, Sanral saying they don't set the policy; they implement the policy and that the user pay principle, there's no other really cost-effective mechanism. You can't have toll booths around those, these highways. Uh, so, and if there is high levels of compliance, the cost will come down. So we're in this sort of um, unclear stage still around e-tolling. We're coming up to uh, an important milestone year in 2014 where we have an election. This is most likely to be an election issue either way. So. If the president signs off and a few weeks later we have e-tolling. You can imagine it's going to be a hot election topic. If he ref refrains from signing off, it's also going to be a hot election topic because we're going to then have to find a way from rather than the user paying for this toll road, we're going to have to find a mechanism to pay for roads that are already built. So there, there's still some water to flow under this bridge. There's still some uncertainties. But I think the big next focus will be on whether uh, President Jacob Zuma signs the necessary, leg necessary legislation to allow Sanral to implement, and then to see how quickly they do start implementing thereafter. And then, of course, we have the Supreme Court of Appeal uh, review that, that needs to take place in September. So, but I think the, the immediate focus will be on the pen on the desk of President Zuma and the bill that he needs to sign off on. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis.